Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church. We're located in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn, uh, far southern end of Brooklyn and New York City, and it's time for today's daily devotion. Our daily devotion is where we take a chapter from the Bible and read it together uh, daily. And we post these videos five days a week, so it's not truly daily, but pretty much daily. And these are just designed to be a tool to help you include God's Word in your day. It's nothing fancy, um, just real life. And uh, we think the best approach to real life is to include time with the Creator of life. And uh, that's, that's God. And so we're reading His Word. We're going through the Gospel of Luke right now. Uh, these videos, by the way, said so we post them five days a week, but they're there. You can access them at any time. And uh, today we're reading Luke chapter 19. This chapter is 48 verses, so kind of the longer side of, uh, of average. And in this chapter, <clears throat> we have one, two, three, four, five uh, subsections. We have Jesus and Zacchaeus. The parable of the ten servants, Jesus' triumphal entry. We are entering into what we call the Passion Week, which is the last week of Jesus' life. Uh, as He enters Jerusalem to observe the Passover, but also understands that He'll be arrested, He will endure a mock trial, be uh, condemned to death, go before the Romans, and ultimately uh, be crucified. And so Jesus' triumphal entry is that entry into Jerusalem. We'll see that. We will also see Jesus weep over Jerusalem. And then Jesus will clear the temple because God's house is being misused. And he has strong feelings about that. <clears throat> Luke chapter 19 begins this way in verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus, and he was the chief tax collector in the region. He had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd, and so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy, but the people were displeased. He's gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And if I've cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. The crowd was listening to everything Jesus said, and because he was nearing Jerusalem, he told them a story to correct the impression that the kingdom of God would begin right away. He said a nobleman was called away to a distant empire to be crowned king and then return. Before he left, he called together ten of his servants and divided <clears throat> among them ten pounds of silver, saying, Invest this for me while I'm gone. But his people hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We do not want him to be our king. After he was crowned king, he returned and called in the servants to whom he had given the money, and he wanted to find out what their profits were. The first servant reported, Master, I invested your money and made ten times the original amount. Well done, the king exclaimed. You are a good servant. You've been faithful with the little I entrusted you, so you will be governor of ten cities as your reward. The next servant reported, Master, I invested your money and made five times the original amount. Well done, the king said. You'll be governor over five cities. But the third servant brought back only the original amount of money and said, Master, I hid your money and kept it safe. I was afraid because you were a hard man to deal with, taking what isn't yours and harvesting crops you didn't plant. You wicked servant, the king roared, your own words condemn you. If you knew that I'm a hard man who takes what isn't mine and harvests crops I didn't plant, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then turning to the other standing nearby, the king ordered, take the money from this servant, give it to the one who has ten pounds. 
But master, they said, he already has 10 pounds. Yes, the king replied, and to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. And as for these enemies of mine who didn't want me to be their king, bring them in and execute them right here in front of me. <clears throat> Verse 28, Jesus' triumphal entry. After telling the story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them, and as you enter it, you'll see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie and bring it here. And if anyone asks, why are you untying this colt? Just say the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, the owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? Where are you taking my donkey? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. God bless these people. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. And as he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place on the road, uh, <clears throat> where the road, excuse me, started down the Mount of Olives, all his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. And he replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way of peace. But now it's too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you to the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not have a single stone in place. They'll not leave a single stone in place because you did not accept your opportunity for salvation. And then Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people selling animals for sacrifices. He said to them, The Scriptures declare, My temple will be a house of prayer, but you've turned it into a den of thieves. After that, He taught daily in the temple, but the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the other teachers of the people began planning how to kill Him. They could think of nothing because all the people hung on every word He said. That's the end of Luke chapter 19. Thanks so much for participating in this chapter. Hope you've been blessed by it, and I hope you'll join us again next time for Luke chapter 20.